Okay, everyone, and welcome to episode eight of Behind the Headlines after taking a couple week hiatus off, but we should be back in full swing now. Uh, so thank you for tuning back in. Make sure you're sharing this with whoever you're subscribing on whatever platform you're seeing this on. Uh, we greatly appreciate those. We read all the comments as well, and we're going to go over some comments here. If you're new to the show, what we do is me and my buddy Steve over at Trade Ideas, we just sit down take a look at the biggest headlines of the week. We try to figure out what the charts are actually telling us. Um, neither me nor Steve are big on, on reading news. That's, again, why we do what we do at Trade Ideas, where we're using charts and technical analysis and data to make better decisions. Um, so we will pair back those news. And then at the end, we just kind of go over user questions and we'll talk about uh, you know some trading knowledge or, or some tidbits that we've figured out here. So Let's get into it, and let's actually just get started here with the first one, with Meta. So, just earnings, right? There's no real news other than this. Uh, people wanted more from earnings. It didn't happen. Uh, we bring up the Meta chart. Big gap down under this massive base that had been putting in for, for many, many months. Um, for me, this is going to be the chart here is obviously confirming the headline. We had Meta absolutely ripping all year long, you know, a low of $85 up to a high of uh, $500. Seems to me like it's sell the news, it's probably going to take a rest. What do you think, Steve? You know, you don't see too many charts like this. And what I mean by that is uh, look at the last uh, three months ago, last quarter in earnings, got everybody gapped up in surprise. I mean, we literally kind of have like a giant island uh you know gap back down here a big mess of uh the last quarter so that in itself you know technically is uh throws red flags up you know you don't mm -hmm. want to see that typically um meta was obviously priced to perfection um you know obviously they were uh looking for a bit more so from here where does it go well we're just right smack in the middle of that gap you just uh, drew um let's let's look at my chart real quick here because you know i, lo I love my moving averages and i'm basically just going to suggest we're going to hang out down here in this area and this is what's happening you see the 10 sma is across the 50 and heading down to see what's going on that's going to be your fast line the 20 sma is going to be behind it so uh, i'm going to just wait and see what happens when the rubber meets the road when price action meets these declining moving averages, that's what's going to tell me what Meta really wants to do. Yeah, and I, I fully agree there. And, you know, just looking at those moving averages, you've got that 200 above it sloping up. You know, that's really important. That tells us the long-term trend. Uh, and then you've got all of the other moving averages above, along with the gap that I highlighted above. To me, it's like it's just a no-go. If you're a short-term trader, that's a completely different beast. If you want to, you know, take a, a couple scalps here or there. But when it comes to a real trend, I think you either need that 200 to resolve lower or you need the other one to resolve higher. And then either of those things will end up helping, uh, you know, show direction in the long run. Okay, so next we are going to take a look here at Google. So completely opposite of Meta that had a nice gap down on negative and uh, negatively expected earnings. This morning, we had Google gap up to brand new highs and just draw out the old highs right here. So spent a little day gap down yesterday and then gapped up today, which may have been part of the rally catching in some shorts there. But just taking a look at this, uh, join the $2 trillion club along with uh, Apple, so it's the second $2 trillion company out there. And I think NVIDIA, they think NVIDIA and Microsoft might be up next. I don't really track these too much. But um, yeah, it looks to me other than when it comes to technical analysis on stuff like this, and I think Steve will agree, as soon as something hits new all-time highs like this, there's, there's not a whole lot to look at, right? Um, I know, Steve, uh, what you would probably want to look at, but we're just on a different charting platform right now due to some technical difficulties um, is the 10 SMA with that. Am I right with that? Would you wait for that to catch up? Yeah, more than likely we're going to see what's happening. And even on the 15 minute right now, if you go to 15 minute, the 10 SMA is propping up the current 15 minute uh, chart as well. So 
again, I love that um, indicator on both time frames, uh, as always. But we've got a ways to go before here. the 10 SMA. It's down there below 160 still, so it's going to have some time on the daily to catch up. All right, so let's pop over here to this screen. We got all of the screens. Boom, and we'll see that there. So, right, obviously the 10 SMA, you know, with all of this choppy action right here, hasn't even got going yet. So you have a long way to go in order to wait for that to catch yep. up on the daily chart. Uh, if we do go into the 15 minute chart, um, yeah, you can see. Oh, pre market it's, it's pre off. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, pre I'm a pre market off kind of guy when it comes to the uh, moving average here, and it'll make much yeah. more sense. There, you go. Oh, that's yeah. what I like to see. Just so holding it like a little bit in its hand. So, you know, and you see, we'll talk about this in a little bit. We're going to talk about we just wrapped up another PMC. We're seeing all kinds of different trading styles at work, and, and Steve will go over that. But this, to me, is is got to be a pretty simple one. Um, and I'm so, I don't know, call it black-pilled or whatever on the, on the fact that you need the most advanced thing in the world and you need to be right all the time. Uh, one thing that I really like about this strategy that Steve talks about all the time with the 10 SMA is you know exactly where you're wrong in this, right? So we're at uh, 172 and change right now. That 10 SMA is right below these two candles. So you, you if you like it, you buy it right here. You put a stop under those two candles and you know right where you're wrong. And, and if you get one of those late day runs on one of these earning plays, you're making three, four, five times your risks. So you don't really have to be right that often, right? And that's what I love about that. But from the swing trading point of view, I just think we're, you know, I'm not going to chase anything up here. It could rip. Um, but what more likely is going to occur is just some sort of kind of resting or basing action, I think. I agree. All right. Well, last but not least, from the news front, we're going good news and then bad news and then good news. And now we're back to bad news. So Tesla had to, they've got, they had to recall, I think, every single Cybertruck because there was some screw that was done wrong or something. So you bring it in and, and they change it. Um, I actually Can saw, I elaborate on what I saw? I think it was more than just a screw. I saw a video and it's scary. It is scary. So the accelerator has this um, aluminum sheath on it. And this guy was showing how he hit it hard and it slipped up and wedged under the floorboard. Yep. Now he's got full throttle going. So he's banging on the brake to try and neutralize the software. And God bless him, he was smart. But most people in that moment are going to freak out and they're going to go through the front of the donut shop. And um, it's a very scary recall, in my opinion. Yeah, or even if you don't have time to react, um, if you're you know, at a crosswalk or, or something like that. It, yeah, it was scary. I saw maybe the same video, but this tech reviewer guy that I follow, and he basically said that the, um, the pedal actually perfectly fits. So like if you look, if you mm -hmm. think about it under the dash, wedged. it's wedged down like this and the pedal perfectly goes and fits there almost like it was designed that it just will. It's like when you're perfectly. filling up your tank, you, lock, you, you fill up your tank and you put the lock on it. It's, not, it's just yeah. full throttle. And it's yeah. just, yeah. So they have that, but then also the article I have up here is um, a lot of these autopilot are, are going through different regulation and regulatory probes where mm -hmm. uh, there's all of these videos out. It's it's kind of funny to see a lot of like the YouTube prankers and the TikTok prankers showing the flaws in these systems. I saw one guy who just had a t-shirt with a stop sign on it and he was walking around, I think it was San Diego or something. And every time you'd see one of these uh, robo taxis or something, he'd just open up his coat and it would just stop dead in the street right then and there. And just showing that like, you know, you're not going to think about that as a dev sitting inside of a room. It's going to take these people messing with it. So you have, right, the recall. Um, you have this going on. I've heard all kinds of bad things with a Cybertruck. Uh, as someone who needs my vehicle to operate because I live in Canada where it's snowing, I'm not too interested in this. But the question I'm going to propose to you, Steve, is, is it already priced in? Um, so let me go to my screen because there's actually... It yeah, it might be already priced in. Um, it's it's hard to say because Tesla has been declining here for a while on yeah. some, you know, on, on, on other stuff. So, yeah, is it priced in? I, I, I don't know. Um, I will say this. I, I am not a fan, really, of 
EVs in general, but this particular model, it's almost like a sell the news event. You know, it finally came out and people finally got their trucks. And I've seen a few and quite honestly, I don't get it. To me, I, it's just like a big man baby toy. You know, if you're in your 30s and you got no family and nobody else to spend money on, mm -hmm. knock yourself out. It's just, it's not for me. Um, and we went through a big rough winter too, where I saw a lot of news uh, where people were frozen out of their cars and they couldn't get into their Teslas. And, you know, I'm, that's probably not a popular opinion. Uh, I live in San Diego. I did a funny video the, the other day where I stood on a, a parking garage and I watched the freeway and I said, let's count how many white Teslas we can see. We saw about five white Teslas in 30 seconds, just complete oh, wow. randomness. I mean, they're just everywhere. They're absolutely ubiquitous here in California, but unpopular opinion. I'm not a fan. I don't own one. I don't want one. Well, it's a little bit different up here with me because it's Canada. If you guys say a cold winter, <laughs> I laugh because it, it, it's nothing. But um, the reason I talk about being priced in, so we have this drawdown indicator and trade ideas that I really like that just shows you how far down from an all-time high we are. And it's already down 43% and was down mm -hmm. um, 55 to 60% from all-time highs. So I wonder how much this is. Um, price in. I totally agree. It's a sell the the news thing. I'm not a fan of the Cybertruck. Again, the same tech reviewer, uh, MKBHD or something. He's like the biggest guy on YouTube. But he made I thought the perfect analogy, which was uh, Do you remember the PT Cruiser, the Chrysler PT Cruiser yeah, yeah. back in the day? Yeah, yeah. He was like yeah. maybe the first one or two of those you saw mm -hmm. was really really cool, but when they became everywhere. It was no longer like this wow factor, interesting vehicle anymore. It was just this ugly station wagon. It was a boomer yeah. car. Yeah. It was the boomer car. I loved them. So I go ahead and do me a favor. Yeah. Uh, put a 50 day moving average on there because I want to say, does the chart confirm the story? That's kind of what we're getting at here. Can, is, can Tesla overcome the negative headlines that have been occurring lately? I'm going to say not until we get above the 50 day SMA and this will come in handy when I want to look at that question we got earlier. So just keep that uh, 50 on there. We're bumping right up against it. This is our third or fourth test of it now. Um, what Tesla needs is a few trades above and closes above that 50, get that 50 to flatten out. And then maybe that might be the worst of it. But until that happens, like Brian Shannon says, it's still guilty until proven innocent for me. Yeah, and I've done some study on moving averages as well. I don't really use them too much when it comes to uh, areas of support resistance like Steve does, but I have done a lot of um, math and TI strength, which is one of the algorithms we have for uh, swing traders over trade ideas, it uses the slope of them. There seems to be some power of basically saying, is the moving average pointing up or is the moving average pointing down as a simple way to kind of define a trend for those who are, are trying to figure out uh, they're new to charting and saying, is my stock in an uptrend or downtrend? And if you look at this, you have both the, the 50 and the 10 are sloping down. So I think that's a pretty easy kind of stay away. And if even if we go back in, in mm -hmm. Tesla's history, you can see times where both the 10 and the 50 are sloping up. And I would say, you know, if you're trying to make your life simpler, pick two moving averages like that and say, if the moving average is sloping up, I'm going to be looking to be a buyer only. If it's sloping down, I'm going to look to be a seller only. And if it's, you know, just moving sideways like this, I'm just going to trade something else. But um, I don't know if it's a if it's a buy the news event as opposed to a sell the news event now that you know everything's been washed out uh, but i'm with steve you, you've got and i'm more of a price action guy you've got this big psychological number of 200 overhead you've got all this kind of chop and slop here overhead you're in a downtrend to me i'm, I'm not interested in this name personally i see a relief bounce yeah yeah it was interesting in the tournament there's a lot of people trading was it tsl l I didn't know this, but it has, there's mm. double long and double short ETFs that are only Tesla. So if you really okay. want to go crazy and you, you think it's, it's over and you want to take a buy on it, um, you know, these give you that double X boost, which is, I, I worry mm -hmm. about these ETFs that they're going to, they're going to cause well, something, but that's, that's the way to win. That's the way to win the contest is go for the leverage too. Okay. So good on them. All right, Steve. So uh, do you want to do the user question first or do you yeah, want to let's, talk Yeah, let's about... do this. Well, okay. I'll read the question. And why don't, while I'm doing that, can you add to your 15-minute chart a 130? Sure. And 
I will answer the question. The question is, is hello. Um, when you're planning to enter a swing trade, Steve, do you only use the 15 minute time frame and the 10 SM and the, the 10 and the 130 SMAs? Or don't you ever use a one day time frame and what indicators then? All right, so Michael is adding the 130. And the question is, is do I just base entries off of this 15 minute chart? And the answer is no. And I'm gonna give you a real time example. Michael's gonna love this. Mind Med. Uh, been trading in and around Mind Med. And I was waiting for it on the, on the let's go to the daily, please. Uh, sure. Because we're gonna look at the daily. I decided to jump back in today at the 50 day moving average. Yeah, I see that. So that's my entry. That, that's the answer to your question. I'm using the zoomed out bigger picture first. I was waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, we're now bouncing down there at the 50 day SMA. And as long as we hold that, um, I'm gonna stay interested as a possible good entry. So now we fast forward to the 15 minute and we've got the 130 kind of hold, that green line there is kind of holding us down. So for the moment, I'm in half size. I like to enter my swing positions, kind of dip my dip one foot in the pool, see what the temperature is, watch it. If I can get a nice pop and maybe a candle, candle or two above this uh, green 130, which again is the five day moving average on a 15 minute chart, mm -hmm. that will confirm to me on the zoomed in time frame that my daily level might be holding and it might be time to add. And maybe if I'm lucky, I get a really nice uh, no pain entry today because I've been patient on that daily chart. I've been waiting for a couple of weeks for it to come back down. It's been underneath those moving averages. And I said, I think it's going to come for the 50. So I might as well just wait. So that answers your question. I'm always using the daily for my entry, but I'm using the intraday for the timing of maybe adding to it or taking some off. Yeah, I would argue that's that's the way to go for uh, regardless of time frame and regardless of trading style. I think that makes perfect sense. If you're uh, a day trader, even, you know, some people will use the daily chart or people will take a 30 minute chart and they'll kind of zoom out on a 30 minute chart for uh, for their levels. And then they use the five minute chart to time entry and exit if they're just looking to day trade. Um, I've seen if you're an investor, right, it makes sense. Maybe you're using the weekly or the monthly chart to set up the trend and to set up what you're going to do. And then you're actually taking trades mm -hmm. based off of the, you know, daily or, or whatever chart. So it makes sense. Uh, I guess another shout out to Brian Shannon. He's got two so far this mm -hmm. one, but with his first book, uh, technical analysis using multiple time frames. you know, that was 10, 15 years now he wrote that. And it makes sense where you just you want the longer term to confirm again, a, a position that you're going to take in the shorter term. And by lining these time frames up, it kind of stacks, I think, odds in your favor where you're not, you know, fading a nice uptrend on the daily chart on a 15 minute chart, you're not doing anything where, where things kind of conflict. Yeah, so um... Again, I don't really have any stock to watch into the weekend or any calls, but you're welcome to, you know, watch MindMed. We're midday here on Friday. We'll see how it closes today, but that, that could be an idea. Uh, if you're still uh, watching, thanks again. What's that? You want to say I was something? just going to say about MindMed, uh, just because, again, this is something that I absolutely love um, that we have in Trade Ideas. It's just this big warning box up here. Earnings in five days. Now, yes. four days. Now, yeah. I will say I am less concerned about earnings on a stock like this, which is like a pharmaceutical company, because they're going to lose money, right? Everyone knows they're going to lose money. It's, it's the, you know, it's not like they're going to have this surprise earnings beat where all of a sudden they can't sell the thing that they're making yet because it's not FDA approved. So earnings yeah, less important in this name. It's going to be more about, um, you know, approvals and partnerships and stuff like that, which you can't really time. But just know that there is that kind of event that's happening in four days. So uh, yeah, thank you for that reminder. Real. It's very important. <laughs> so um, if you're still watching, thank you. Um, I don't have any specific calls to make, but I wanted to finish uh, the segment with something kind of unique. Um, and again, if you like what you're hearing, please like, share and set the alarms and tell your friends. But I'm going to go back. Um, I started trading full time in 1998. And there were no decimals. We were trading fractions, and a lot of people were using level two much more than you would use now. And I was talking yesterday in Barry's room about how, again, there's no science to successful trading. It's an art form. You can take any time frame, you can take any indicator, 
I recommend don't using too many. Some people, you know, like HCPG to give them a shout out. They use the Bollinger Bands extremely well. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Shannon use anchored VWAP very well. I like to use SMAs and pivots. Doesn't matter how you trade as long as you can get it done. But just for those who are curious, over the years, I've run into different types of traders and I just thought it would be fun to talk about a few different styles and how other people do it out there. I think we kind of know how I like to do it. I like my swing trading, my day and a half push, get in, get out, surf the market and constantly recycling capital and having fresh powder. You know, when I first started trading, uh, I was all about the charting as I always have been, but there was a, a guy who was really good and he came from the pits and his mind worked differently. And you have to go with where your mind strength is. He was a photographic memory and numbers guy. And so he took what he knew in the pits and he stared at literally 20 level two boxes, Jeez. maybe a tiny little chart, maybe a tiny chart. He never looked at the chart, but Michael, I kid you not, this guy was just watching these colors dancing and that was his pit. He was trading an electronic pit and he just bid offer bump, and he could see, and he knew in his mind, clear the fifties and this one clear. And he just knew the level in every stock. It was just blew my mind. I could never do anything like that because my mind isn't built like that. I'm visual. And then I came to meet another guy, uh, Jeff, who uh, traded again, you can't do this anymore. And by the way, what the, the first guy was doing, you can't do that anymore because of uh, HFT and decimals. Um, another amazing style this guy did is he traded this specialist. Okay, before ARCA and all that came along in the New York Stock Exchange, you had to go through the individual. All trades went through the specialist. And these guys didn't look at charts necessarily. They looked at the tape. It was called tape reading. And they watched print, print. Print, print, print. And all of a sudden they would get a feel. And this one guy had a feel for the three different specialists. I think it was Citigroup, GE, and I can't remember Home Depot, whatever. And he just knew the personality of the specialist that was running these trades. Print, 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 print. Block, play, block trade, clean out, print. Boom, he'd go along. And another amazing ability to look at information in real time with nothing really visual other than him knowing when the prices would reverse based on block trades and sizes and momentum of the tape, incredible. And then we've got another guy who's probably still over at Centerpoint Securities. And the reason they're at Centerpoint Securities is because they have the best borrow list available. If you're yeah. gonna borrow in short stocks and do it legally, um, you gotta have the borrow. And what these guys do, and again, I will include uh, Andrew Aziz and the Bull Bears traders, they do kind of the same thing. They look for the big, fun retail, two, three day momentum, absolute parabolic moves and then they get interested at the top of the quote unquote top of the parabolic move and they start nibbling short nibbling short nibbling and they're looking for that one trade that we've all seen right when you're the last bag holder in a parabolic move and that bid just drops like a safe in space those guys are positioned and that's their bread and butter and i've seen guys make a lot of money doing it i've seen them have some big drawdowns too because sometimes they stand in the way and they're the ones that are being squeezed because they're yeah, the shorties exactly so just neat little stories over the years i've met a lot of people uh, i've seen a lot of different ways of making it you know michael is a math nerd and i'm a visual uh right brained artistics person so we approach the market in two different ways yeah, and I, I think the, and this is why I love the Market Wizards series as a series of books where he just interviews all of these people that are, are well-known traders and have been trading well. Um, and, you know, you have to show, to get into the Market Wizards, there has to be third-party audited financial statements of your trading, so you know all of them in there are legit. And what's funny to hear, like Steve was talking about, they all trade differently. They all have a, a niche of all these guys are, are amazing and have made millions and millions of dollars trading, but none of them would just take the other guy's trade and and trade like that. They all have a completely different style. And yeah, I think that just comes back to that's kind of, in, in my opinion, the crux of trading where you just need to figure out what that style is for you, right? If you're going to be a Time Boyinger frame. Band person, then make sure that's your focus. And you're not a Boyinger Band plus an RSI plus a this plus a that focus on the Boyinger Band. Steve has his... Um, 10 SMA and that's kind of the focus uh, behind his trading and, and figuring figuring out what that is and what works for you and then really milking that I think that's that's long term uh, the move because it's the whole you don't want to be that jack of all trades and, and master of none 
Um, and I can't force it. I still have many things going on. I probably got five notifications I'm going to have to click on after we stop recording here, Michael, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I can't sit there and focus on level two and scalp and day trade. I am a swing trader. I can, t I can look away for 30 minutes and come back and go, what happened? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I can go back to where I was. So you have to go with what works for you. If you don't have a second job and you want a day trade, knock yourself out. It's like flying an instrument approach on a bad landing in bad weather, but you're going to be mentally exhausted after six hours. And that's not for me anymore either. I used to no. do that. No, I think, uh, you know, a bit of a young man's game, maybe, maybe it's just a mm -hmm. head stock. Move. But I, I even remember uh, being 18 when I used to day trade at the prop firm and everyone else would be going to the bar after work. And I'm like, I gotta go to, I gotta take a nap. Because I just, you know, I, I put through, this was back, like Steve was talking about, before HFTs, when we were the HFTs. So I'm like, I placed like 200 trades today. I, I got to take a, I got to take a break. Um, the, that story of the gentleman watching all the level twos, that made me want to take a nap. Just that, that alone, because <laughs> I'm like, just doing that would just, you know, for me, just kind of blow you up mentally. So um yeah no that's good and and again tune in because there's a lot more war stories that i'm sure that will will come up over time and yeah i appreciate everyone for coming again if you're still here at this point i think we've earned a, a like and a share and a retweet and a comment and all those things that annoying youtubers tell you to do but it really does help with the discoverability of the show and you know helps us motivates us to keep going so thank you everyone for coming by uh we'll be back on this normal schedule. So I'll talk to you all next week. See you. See ya.